Greetings, greetings, you're with Tanisha Ali, and today I am talking about the popular topic of twin flames. Have you met your twin flame or are you dealing with a false twin flame? Today's topic, I will be giving you, in today's topic, I will be giving you the 10 reasons that I believe can let you know or at least bring you one step closer to the realization that you've possibly met your twin flame. If this looks like a topic that you could really dig into, stick around and see if any of these 10 reasons apply to you. Right. With Tanisha Ali, again, of Butterfly Transformations, connecting you to the vision of who you Truly, y'all, I'm coming at you today with what I feel are 10 key indicators that you have possibly met your twin flame. Before I dig into that, though, I first want to present in context what the whole idea of a twin flame is. And you can research this, but I want to give you a general synopsis of what a twin flame is. The idea has been around in spiritual circles for since ancient times. And it comes out of a belief or the notion that as a soul, a soul split into two separate souls, not into two halves, but into two separate souls and incarnate in a particular lifetime in order to assist one another in delivering some sort of a divine imperative, if you will, or they have a divine purpose. Now, your twin flame doesn't necessarily have to incarnate with you at this particular time in your life cycle. It could be, from what I understand, that people have been known to have twin flames that are guiding them from other dimensions as well. But what, I, what I'm talking about in this particular video is the whole concept that you have incarnated multiple lifetimes and in this particular part of your material reality, you come face to face in some form or another with that person who has your identical energetic signature okay so this is a very very interesting concept and it can sound very foreign to a lot of you so i'm going to give you just a very grounded way to look at this i have always believed in the hermetic principle as above so below i teach that every day mindset work your outer world is a true reflection of what is inside what is inside will no doubt reflect outside so i want you to look at the twin flame concept in the same way you can have a twin right here in this world. We can have an egg that separates into two separate eggs or two separate souls that bring two beings into this lifetime that have a connection and an etheric cord that is simply unrivaled, right? So as above, so below. If you can have that in the physical realm, then clearly you can have something of the same magnitude and more or greater in the spiritual realm. So that's the first thing. Now, I just wanted to kind of get that out of the way. So one of the first signs, um, because there are a multitude of signs, and if you look into this topic, you're going to find people talking about it from all vantage points. And clearly, there's some controversy around this topic. So, you know, you got to kind of think about how you feel about it in general and where you fall on that continuum. The first sign is that I feel is that you have to be on a spiritual path, meaning you have to be someone who is very serious about evolving to the next level of their human consciousness. First and foremost, this happens to more evolved souls. As some people will say, this happens to more old souls or advanced souls. That is my belief is that you need to be on a spiritual path. One of the second uh, hallmarks of a relationship such as this one is that it comes out of nowhere. It comes literally out of nowhere. It appears or the individual appears in your life and it's almost as if you have an instant recognition. You automatically have a very deep connection with this person and being with this person feels like home. Another word for home, goody gany in the Somali culture. Um, it feels like Home. It feels like you know this person, that you have known them for a lifetime. Beyond the typical way that we can meet a soulmate or someone else 
that we come into contact with in this world and we feel like we know them because with soulmates, they're a part of your soul, the over soul you incarnate with in a lifetime and it provides all of the necessary fuel you need also for your soul's evolution. But a twin flame kind of knowing is different. This person comes into your life absolutely out of nowhere. When you meet them, there is a strong sense of knowing as if you've known this person before. You can look at them and you can almost already know what they need. You can look at this individual and you can travel through their eyes. They're, the pulling and the knowing is a very, very strong connection that cannot be explained by conventional means or even at the soulmate level, although a twin flame connection is a soulmate connection. So that part is something that really distinguishes that meaning when you feel at home with someone, you can share everything with that person. There's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing that you cannot tell them. You don't worry about anything because in that moment that you feel totally connected to that individual, um, you the ego has disappeared. So there's no judgment. There's, there's none of that. You're able to reach a level with this individual where the ego sometimes just totally dissipates. The third way that you can know, many people will say, and I agree with this, that the meeting comes at an inopportune time in an unexpected package. Meaning uh, it may not present in the package that you might would think of. It could be someone much older. It could be someone from an ethnic group that you might think you would never be attracted to. It could be someone of a different religious persuasion, okay? The energy of the relationship does not recognize the differences and the labels that we traditionally put on things. Inopportune time, meaning you may be at a point in time in your life where you're not free or able to entertain that particular relationship. So those are two other ways that fall under number three. So that when this person comes into your life, it very simply will not be someone necessarily who you would identify as having such a strong connection with. Number four, it seems though as if the connection that you have with this individual, somehow they have been particularly groomed across lifetimes within this lifetime to measure up with or to mesh with exactly who you are and the strangest and most weird of circumstances can present themselves. I'll give you just an, an, an off the cuff example. Let's say that you speak three of the most unusual languages in the world. Only a small percentage of the people on the landscape of the planet speak this particular language. This person may come into your life and although they speak your predominant language, the language that you all communicate with, with most of the other people you know, they also know this language. And there's something else also about them. Are there other things that you continuously uncover that have strange coincidences, coinciding of events? For example, maybe you went to schools in different parts of the world that had the same names. Maybe uh, meaningful people in your immediate family share the same names. All sorts of things that act as ways to affirm and confirm that this is not, this is, is no ordinary love, that this is no ordinary love and that this is no ordinary situation. So that's number four. Number five is that the energy that the two of you have when you are together is perfectly complementary, while at the same time having an identical energetic imprint. And what I mean by that is where you are strong, that person has a complementary energy that may be weaker that you can assist with. And where that person may be stronger, there are a particular area of your life that that person um, will uh, be able to pour into. So let's say, for example, you are someone who may often be in your emotions or, or someone who's not able to access, access your emotions, then that other person will be able to bring that essence to you to help you to develop and to bring that level of awareness to you. Um, it could be in any particular area of your life where the two of you can complement each other. And this becomes clear relatively early in the connection. 
By the same token, you have an identical energetic imprint. If you are identical souls and you have an identical imprint or you do have an identical imprint, then what that speaks to is that there's something in your energy that knows its match. There's something in your energy, who you are, your rhythm, your dance to life, your soul song, that that person is a perfect mirror of, that they are a perfect replica of. It is as if they are the same you. That is one of the other very, very key ways that you can know. So while you have that energetic signature that draws yourself to yourself, you also are each other's perfect complement. And therein lies the problem that I'll get to a little bit further along in this. I'm looking at a list. I want to make sure I don't leave anything out. So I want to come back to that. But number six is that all of your chakras are aligned when you are with this individual. Okay, and when um, you are in that energetic space where ego is not interfering and you're in a space where you can uh, return to love or you're always in that love frequency when you're around this person, and then what happens is all of your chakras are aligned, right? And you know, we have the root chakra, which deals with security. So you feel safe and secure with this person. We have the sacral chakra, which deals with emotion, passion, zest for life, sexual energy. So sexual energy is very strong. Passion is very strong. Then you move up to the solar plexus, right? The two of you feel like you can take on the world. You can do anything together, all right? Then you move up to the heart chakra. The love is extremely strong. It's unrivaled. There's nothing like it. You move up to the throat chakra. You can be your authentic self and speak your truth with this individual, bar none. Third eye chakra, meaning that you are so aligned with this individual that you two are telepathically connected. You connect in the higher realm. And there is a particular peculiarity about the way in which you connect with this person in terms of mind reading, in terms of telepathy, in terms of just knowing, and also in the way that you all are able to clear the limiting beliefs that may be standing in the way of the union or able to at least identify and shed the light of awareness on the limiting beliefs, okay? Those are just some examples. Crown chakra, you know that there is something divine about the union. And one, if not both people are channeling and are able to testify to what that is. There is some sense that the union is larger than life. And it goes beyond just two people feeling as though they are in love. You understand what I'm saying? So number seven, um, the universe seems to support the union. All manner of synchronicities uh, will be shown in a way that helps you to recognize that you have met your twin flame or that something unusual is going on. It goes well beyond double numbers. It goes well beyond um, normal and convenient uh, synchronicities and things that can happen when we meet people that we fall in love with and that we care de dearly for, uh, any type of relationships, whether they're karmic relationships or soulmate relationships. In a twin flame relationship, it is as if the entire universe notices you, the entire universe prays for you, the entire universe sings your praises, okay? So this is an ongoing experience that those individuals have who have been connected and plugged in to that twin flame energy. The other number seven, I think, no, number eight. The eighth, I hope I'm on number eight. The eighth sign that you've met your twin flame is, you remember I mentioned earlier on that you two complement each other and you share the same energetic signature? This is the part of it that rivals uh, what I like to call a false twin flame or a karmic relationship on steroids. That individual comes into your life, into this experience, car incarnating with the exact tools and the exact energies and everything else that makes up their self, their soul self. They come into this experience possessing everything that is needed to also not only attract you and hold you like this, 
but to also mirror the worser, not the worser, the darker aspects of you, the not so light energies that you possess, which is why those people who are on a spiritual path are those souls that are fortunate enough to have this experience because it requires a lot of work. You are vomiting up and coming to terms with that part of yourself that you have hidden, that part of yourself that you may have thought you had healed, but this person comes along to show you that aspect of yourself on steroids that is still there, regardless of what it is in your life that you need to come to terms with. This person pushes those buttons in you nonstop just by being who they are. And they are not wrong for being who they are. And neither is the other person in the relationship wrong for who they are, but they are perfectly suited in who they are, in their identity to push your buttons, to trigger those aspects of yourself that either you think you've dealt with or you haven't been willing to deal with, or you have not fully, fully addressed. They bring those things up. And in them bringing those things up, that is what creates what is defined as, in addition to all of this magnetic energy and all of the chakras being on in this state of euphoria, that is, the, is what actually brings the two entities or the energies face to face and causes the what is referred to as the runner chaser mode, which that too should have a limit. And I speak about a false twin flame scenario in another video that you can look at on the channel because that runner chaser mode can become toxic and it can become addictive and it is something that you want to tread carefully upon when you begin to define and accept whether or not you're in a twin flame relationship a twin flame relationship should not bring you to your knees it should not break you down to the point to where you're constantly in this push situation that just does not seem to end okay that is not what I'm talking about what I'm talking about is it challenges you while bringing such heightened energy to you that oftentimes because of the inopportune time oftentimes because of the inability for us to do the work that we need to do and a multitude of other things it becomes too much and so it causes one person to run and the other person to pursue no matter how much time goes by, one person may run, or one person may pursue. When they come together, it is usually defined as union. When they are not together, it is usually defined as separation. Now, ultimately, this, this twin flame relationship um, ideally would bring both people into a union during a particular lifetime. However, if they are not able to come into union during a particular lifetime, it is also believed that in the next lifetime or in the next lifetime that they will have another opportunity to come into union. But I say that because this union does not often occur overnight for many twin flame couples. And you will have many stories and you will experience many stories where people have waited um, unusually long amounts of time to come into union because Union represents the time where they are truly each other's uh, perfect mates in the sense that those things that were needing to have been dealt with that created conflict and the runner chaser mode and the ability, inability for the two people to put their egos on hold, those situations or those uh, character personality flaws that were coming into conflict with one another have been resolved or they're at a high state of being uh, resolved and the two individuals are ascending, okay? And as they are ascending, now they are able to come into union to do the work that needs to be done because let's face it, how can you bring light to the world if you yourself are not light? How can you bring union to the world if you yourself are not union within? And remember, ultimately the twin flame concept is all about union with the self, uniting your divine masculine and feminine energies into one whole, and then coming into union with that other aspect of yourself that mirrors that same wholeness. All right, so you're coming together to for an even larger, I guess you could say, experience of wholeness. Um, I think I'm on number, that was number nine, I think. So number 10 is... Uh, 
the willingness to step aside. And when I say the willingness to step aside, what I mean is, you know how in, in, in relationships we always hear uh, about people having such great love for each other, but not being able to separate from each other. In a, two, in a true twin flame relationship, it is my belief that one party, if not both parties, are able to step aside to let the other experience the soul growth that they need to experience. And really it's both people experiencing the soul growth. I don't necessarily believe in the the notion that one person comes into the union less evolved than the other. Who gets to decide who's less evolved than the other or who's more spiritual than the other? Both people need to be on a spiritual path. They need to somehow be equally yoked yoked, and, and, and traveling similar trajectories in life, whatever those paths are. And so when they reach that point, that runner chaser mode, and it has become so uh, dysfunctional or it's, it's, it's come to a head and those people are not able to just by presenting their uh, uh, mirroring energetic signature, able to shake that person into what is their best version, then those two people often have to go their separate ways to each continue doing their soul's healing work and or developing their light. I truly believe that as one person does their work, it does benefit the other twin. And I also also believe that both people are still energetically connected, which brings me to number 10, which is the relationship, the connection, the vibe, the resonance stands the test of time. And it stands the test of the runner chaser mode and it stands withstands all of the other challenges. This is no ordinary love. This is no ordinary love that you have with this individual. And so it does not matter how much time goes by. You hold love for this individual. You feel connected to this individual. It doesn't matter what has happened. In fact, quite the opposite can happen. Whereas in normal relationships, they can eventually fizzle out and burn out. Okay, and you can find yourself in a situation where the, the person did the very ne next thing to break the, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. And after that, you didn't want anything else to do with that person. Well, the interesting thing about a twin flame relationship is you always hold pure love for that individual, no matter what the union or the separation has brought into the lives of both of you. You're always easily able to nurture that true sense of love. It does not go away. Why? Because it is not a thing of the third dimensional reality. It is something of an etheric nature. It is something uh, otherworldly. It is something multidimensional. And it's also something that you don't control as a physical being here on this planet at this particular time as this little peon here on earth. You don't control that. It's much larger than you. So the relationship will stand the test of time. The love feelings will never dim. In fact, they can get stronger and stronger as time goes on. And no matter what happens, you are always that individual's greatest cheerleader. You want the best for them from the bottom of your heart, unlike the way you may have felt about anybody else that you've ever met in your life because the twin flame relationship is a once in a lifetime opportunity to come to know yourself and to come to know the divine. So you're with Tunisia Ali of Butterfly Transformations, connecting you to the vision of who you truly are. Hopefully I have shed some light on this whole concept of twin flames and have demystified it for you and have put you one step closer to determining whether or not you've met your twin flame or whether or not not you didn't meet your twin flame. Check out my false twin flames video. Check out my soulmate relationships video. Check out my karmic relationships video. And I'll be making more videos on this topic as we move along. If you did not subscribe to the channel, make sure that you hit that button down below and you subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, like this video, comment on it, and share it. Have a beautiful day. This is Tanisha Ali connecting you to the vision of who you truly are, helping you to get clear, to up-level your mindset, 
to heal and clear energetic road blockages and to manifest the glory of God that is within you. Check out my book on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. It is called Manifesting Your Masterpiece, Self-Coaching and Daily Mindset Reflections to help you up-level your life.